Alan Adadero and Stacy McKissick were the parents of three-year-old son Jared Adadero and six-year-old daughter Jocelyn. Alan and Stacy had recently divorced, and both children were now living with Alan. Alan Adadero was a phys ed teacher at a local junior high school in the area and relied on his religious beliefs to keep himself grounded and to be the best father he could be to his children. He joined a local club called the Christian Singles Network, which assisted Alan with his life as a single father. Alan, Jared, and Jocelyn became very involved in the club and began to join in on the club's group activities. In October of 1999, the three were staying at Padres River Resort in Colorado, in which Alan was co-owner of the hotel with his twin brother, Arlen. The Christian Singles Network had planned an outing to the state fish hatchery, and both Jared and Jocelyn were very excited to go on this trip. Alan was reluctant about the trip because he had to work, and the group would be taking care of the kids during their visit to the hatchery. But at the end of the day, he wanted to keep his word and decided to let them go. At some point during the visit to the hatchery, the group, which consisted of 11 people, plus Jocelyn and Jared, decided to go on a hike on the nearby Big South Trail. Alan Adadero remembers that it was one of those gorgeous fall bluebird days in the mountains of Colorado. Reports widely vary on exactly what happened from this point. However, it is believed that the group split into two groups, one with the faster paced hikers and the other with the slower. It's not known which group Jared was in. However, it is reported that he ran ahead of the group he was with. Jared supposedly stopped and talked with two fishermen in the area before walking quickly up the trail near a group of adjacent campsites. The fishermen later told authorities that they didn't think much of Jared speaking with them because at the time the hiking group was only 50 to 80 feet down the trail. The members of the group, including Jocelyn, heard a loud scream not long after this. Jocelyn later reported that the scream had little context as it sounded both like somebody getting attacked or somebody playing with someone. A playful scream like someone was going up to tag Jared. The group quickly realized that Jared was missing and started searching for Jared. They searched the area around the trail for about an hour before returning to the resort to tell Alan of the events that had occurred. Alan, understandably shaken, got into his vehicle and immediately went to the trail to look for Jared. Alan reportedly screamed, They lost my baby. They lost my baby. The Larimer County Sheriff's Office was notified of Jared's disappearance, and a search and rescue team was deployed to the area immediately. Bill Nelson, now a recently retired undersheriff with the Larimer County Sheriff's Office, was in charge of the search for Jared. Absolutely, I thought we would find him, he said. Yes, it was a young child. My thought was that we should be able to get in there with our people and do what we do and what we have done hundreds of times, find the person. It might take a few hours to find the child crying or hiding someplace nearby, but, but we would be done before midnight. The extensive search for Jared ran into multiple problems. Besides the media frenzy surrounding it, a helicopter used in the search for Jared crashed. The team on board the helicopter was severely injured and the helicopter was destroyed. But fortunately, no one was killed. Larimer County Sheriff Justin Smith was a sergeant with the department during the search and recalled the intensity of the media and sensationalism surrounding Jared's disappearance. I remember from moment one that second day, we quickly realized what we were up against, Smith said. We had searchers down who they were bringing out on stretchers. We had a missing kid overnight. We had Air Force closing off the crash site. Emotionally, it was overwhelming, and you could see it in the eyes of everybody involved. TV satellite trucks, 17 at one time, lined up along Colorado Highway 14 with anchors and fur coats walking around and anybody and everybody calling us for information. Psychics professed to know where the searchers could find Jared. A barefooted man with a donkey showed up at the campsite, ready to track Jared down. An American Indian came to perform a ritual, asking the mountain to give up the boy. Searchers combed riverbanks and up steep slopes. Dive teams peered into small pools left in the narrow, slow-moving river. A plane made passes overhead, but was unable to locate Jared. It became a tornado, a hurricane. The biggest storm in all of our lives, Alan Adadero said. I was critical of them at the time because when you were in a survival situation, you want everything that can be done to be done. And at times, I thought there was so much more they could have done. With no sign of Jared, the search gradually ended and the case went cold. In 2003, businessman Rob Osborne and Gareth Watts were hiking in the Padre Canyon area near the Big South Trail 
and came across partial human remains. Also nearby were a brown polar fleece sweater, a pair of blue trousers, and the Disney's Tarzan sneakers that Jared had been wearing when he disappeared. Authorities were notified and the further searching revealed a human molar and a large sized piece of a fractured human skull. DNA testing at the time revealed that the remains were 86% likely to be Jared Adadero's, but more modern DNA testing revealed that the human remains were 100% Jared's. Rather than bury or cremate the remains, Alan Adadero decided to keep them, creating a shrine to Jared out of his old bedroom, kept exactly as it was before he disappeared, with the skull piece kept atop Jared's favorite toys and belongings. According to Alan, I am at peace and I know I am going to see Jared again one of these days. I'm going to look at him and say, Jared, what happened? He's going to look at me and say, Dad, does it really matter? Although the general consensus of the case is that Jared Adadero was killed and eaten by a large animal, presumably a mountain lion, the contention around this theory is strong. According to Allen, experts on big cats in Colorado had told him that the mountain lion would have attacked the boy's stomach first, aiming for the internal organs inside, yet Jared's sweater showed no signs of such an attack. Moreover, the boy's trousers were turned inside out, something that a mountain lion would not have done, and the Tarzan sneakers showed only minimal wear, with no sign whatsoever of having been dragged, indicating that a mountain lion could not have dragged the boy's body all the way up the trail that far into the mountains without destroying the sneakers. That being said, mountain lion tracks had been discovered next to Jared's tracks in the initial search. According to Allen, the search team found some cougar prints coming down toward his tracks, and where the cougar prints and little person's prints come together, the child prints disappear. At the time that Alan stated this, another initial theory had existed that Jared may have slipped and fallen, either getting caught in the rocky terrain and dying from exposure or dying from the fall. This theory has been largely ruled out, although not completely considered implausible by authorities. One other existing theory is that Jared was abducted and murdered by somebody who captured him, then disposing of the boy's clothing. This theory was backed up, being that a human being could have turned the trousers inside out. The only damage to the trousers had come from rodents and birds yanking away large pieces of the fabric to weave into the nearby nests. Although family and friends were questioned about the case, there was no indication otherwise that at least anybody that the Adadero family knew had taken Jared. To this day, the case remains unsolved. Unsolved.